why would a pastor say this in a sermon? Three people say, get low, 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 get low from the window. You got to get low, get low, get low. Come on, church. I know you're holy, but you hear me. Get low. But let's talk about it here on All Things Theology. Cue my theme music. All Things Theology, All Things Theology. We chop it up properly without an apology. Gotta get that theology to God, hallowed be, because this is how we do it at All Things Theology. Yo, grace and peace, and welcome back to another episode of All Things Theology, where this is your host, K Dub, and today. We're going to talk about your boy, Keon Henders. You're going to be saying this quite a bit today. No, 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 no. Yeah, I mean, this is just a, it goes with Keon. This sermon was just a couple days ago, or by the time of this, probably a couple weeks now, uh, where the sermon was called the true or false test. Good sermon title if you want to talk, hey, you know, a hey, true Christians, false Christians, true doctrine, uh, bad doctrine. But I actually have no idea, and I have my PhD in foolishness, what a lot of this sermon was about. But we're going to talk about it, and we're going to see, does the text say what Keon says a lot in this? So let's, let's actually start with the intro of this sermon. Put your thinking caps on. Let's get into it. Because of my humility, every time I sat in the back, somebody would come get me and bring me up. I don't know who I'm talking to, but because you've laid down your life and because you've been overlooked and because you have allowed people to mistreat you, God told me to tell you somebody's about to call you up. It's not somebody say God's about to call you up. Be thou faithful. I, I hate when pastors use the, I don't know who I'm talking to, right? But they're going to say it anyway. So that way, if it happens, they can say, hey, I told you. But the point is, hey, uh, the point is he's trying to say is, hey, you're in the back now. But God's, you're going to get called on and you're going to be called to the front. That's so vague. <laughs> what, are you going to be in college class and someone, the professor is going to pick on you? You're going to be in a job board meeting and your boss is going to pick on you, right? Come to the front. I mean, it's so vague that literally it could be fulfilled by any little thing, right? <laughs> but let's keep going. Oh, over a few things and see when I call you up <laughs> to be rule over much. I need about 41 people. To give somebody a high five and say, I'm about to be balling. I'm about to be ruler over much. I have been second place, third place, last place. <laughs> so you, <laughs> so now you about to ball. Oh yeah, I hope you have your bread, your oven preheated, right? We have ours, we have ours on a nice 666 for this. One. I got bread in my Yeah, he's going to ball. What in the DMX is happening right now? <laughs> this is absolutely ridiculous. But let's listen to this one. The first shall be last and the last. No, 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 no. Now, I want you go read Matthew 20. Is Matthew 20 about you um, balling out? You're, 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 you're in a bad place right now. But while you're here on earth, you're going to actually... Um, <laughs> be balling out of control no go read the passage it's a, a it's a parable jesus gives about the kingdom of heaven and what the end will culminate in this is about ultimately in heaven you know christians also all, often suffer we're often the last on this earth but there is going to be a point in time where god flips the script so to speak it has nothing to do with you <laughs> you know being in a bad spot now you're going to be balling out of control this man's a twist scripture twister to the max my goodness i'm tired of church somebody shout it's about to turn around it's about to turn around let me speak to somebody in the back of the church somebody where you are sitting is not a function of where you gonna end up <laughs> i speak to somebody in the back god got front row seats for you at destiny can i he could just make that happen right now but again what does this have to do with the first shall be or the last shall be first and the first shall be last? Absolutely nothing. I mean, <laughs> he's going to say it again. They just need to wake up earlier, right? Get somebody to give them glory in this place. Yeah! 
Don't you think that because you ain't on the front row that somebody up here is my favorite? They up here because they got here early. Now, you don't have to work on your time, but it don't got nothing else to do with nothing else. It don't mean that I love you more. It's just you left home too late. The, the front row is the tither section, you know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, let's get to the meat of this sermon. Well, I say meat. I don't mean literally because there's no meat in this sermon. It's just what the sermon topic is about. See, I, you know, like I'm looking at y'all ladies, so y'all anticipating something about to happen. I, I love that. I'm about to give y'all something. You're about to shout and run up out of here. Y'all ready? He, he, said, he gives a dream <laughs> and he says, all right, uh, I had this dream. I had this dream. Now, first of all, he's rich. He's got a child. His kingdom is, a, is blowing up. Everything is working well for him. And he had a dream. Can I tell you something? Don't stop dreaming because things are going well. Now, he's talking about Daniel. Now, is Daniel just kind of, you know, producing these dreams and kind of fantasies he wants in his life? Or did God give the dream about the kingdom? Yeah, I think that's obvious, right? Daniel's not dreaming about like how good he's going to have it. Like, hmm, I want to ball, right? Let me let me ball out of control. That, that, that's kind of how he's taking this passage to me. But let me keep playing it. If you stop dreaming because things are going well, the dream is going to end and you won't have anything to supplement it because you didn't continue to dream. Such three people say, keep dreaming. All right. That means when you finally get the job of your dreams, dream of another job. That means when you finally get the card that you've been waiting for, don't woosah and relax. Start dreaming about the next thing. What, what am I saying? I'm going to go from dreaming about my dream car to now having a car lot. See, you see, there's always another level to the dream. I'm no, 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 no. OK, but is that the prophecy of Daniel? Daniel is dreaming. He's having a prophecy. It's not. It's, it's actually a, a vision. If you want to be technical, it's a vision about the coming kingdom. You know, this is where we get into eschatology and things like that. But no matter what your eschatology is, we can clearly see this. <laughs> he has nothing to do with the text. Is Daniel dreaming about, hey, getting a job? Now I'm dreaming about getting another job. I got a car I got, or I got a chariot. Now I got a lot of chariots. No, he ain't. Daniel ain't talking about none of that. What is going on, sir? This ain't nothing but a money coming to me now. Money coming to me now. That ain't this ain't nothing what but the text is talking about. What is he talking about? I <laughs> mean, literally, my goodness. I'm going to dream from having home ownership to collecting rent from people from the things that I own. There's another level to the dream. Find a dreamer and high five him and say, keep dreaming. Keep dreaming. Hold on. We got a we got a word for you. Get your hands off me. Keep dreaming. Keep dreaming. I don't have the money. I don't care. Keep dreaming. <laughs> I don't have the collateral. I don't care. Keep oh dreaming. God. This is bad. So he's doing well. He's doing well. He's dreaming. And the 15th century French philosopher, Rene Descartes said, no, 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 no. Now, before we get into this quote, I want to even say there's a problem with him using Rene Descartes to justify what he's about to say about dreaming. But Rene Descartes was a Catholic, but he's actually more uh, deist. You know, deists believe that God was not really in control of this earth or, or rather he was not actually involved in human affairs. And so I'm not sure how this actually he wants to use Rene Descartes to justify all this madness because Rene didn't Rene, Rene Descartes, a deist, didn't believe in a personal God, you know, that one that communicated with humans and he just kind of start the clock and God is just kind of sitting back uh, uninvolved in human affairs. Why is he quoting him? I have no clue. Well, because he found a quote that he liked that he can justify his sermon because he ain't got no Bible to do it. Let's get to the real. Let's get to the real reality of it. But let's hear this quote. Yes. Listen to me. If you keep dreaming, you dreaming, it won't be long. It won't be long before your dreaming life looks like your waking life. OK, so let's examine this quote. If you keep dreaming, if you keep dreaming, it won't be long before your dreaming life is like your waking life. Let, let's break this down. What is he trying to say? Essentially, you just got to keep dreaming and eventually it'll come into reality. I mean, this is kind of some new thought. Our, our dreams, not even now our thoughts, but our dreams can create reality if we just keep dreaming it. 
Well, I hope not because as a kid, maybe you guys had this dream. I used to have terrible dreams of me falling off the Grand Canyon, <laughs> which is probably why I'll never go. <laughs> but the point is your dreams aren't creating a reality for you. I mean, you dream some nonsense. I've dreamed I've flown over 30 story skyscrapers. <laughs> are you are you actually telling me if I keep dreaming that I'm going to do it? You know, it's, I know if you're anything like me, you, you dream some nonsensical stuff, right? Some, some stuff that don't just don't make no sense. Go and tell me your dream that just didn't make no sense. But according to Keon and Renee Descartes, if you keep dreaming it, it's going to happen. There's a reason why it's dreams is because it's non-reality, <laughs> but he's trying to make this non-reality world come into reality. It's just fiction right here. Y'all gonna make me come down here. All right. I want all of the people, Haley, everybody who's looking at me, if you ever had something in your dream that was like bananas, it was crazy. You saw yes. it was amazing. Like was you was living on the 80th floor and, and it was 10,000 square feet and, and you owned the company and the business. And how many of y'all had like crazy dreams like that? Descartes says that if you keep seeing it in your sleep, one day you'll see it when you won't. Look at me. Hold on. That's why the devil keeps disturbing your sleep. I need 500 people in here say, I don't care what happens today. I'm going to bed. Oh, you missed what I said. I'm going to bed. I got to get to sleep so God can show me what I'm going to see when I wake up. I got No, you need to go to sleep because you've been staying up and getting four hours of it. And that was affecting your health. You, you can't focus. And now you're having crazy dreams like this and you actually think they're real. How about that? That ain't Satan. That's yourself because you you can't you, you can't sleep. Now, this guy, maybe he didn't get enough sleep last night. Now, this is his sermon. I don't know. But what does this got to do with anything? What Bible verse are we in, sir? I mean, literally. Can we talk for a minute? The Bible says. What, 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 what does this got to do with Daniel's dream? What? Oh, my goodness. I go to bed. What are don't let these nobody disturb this? your sleep today. Tell your husband, Earl, we ain't arguing today. I got to go to bed because I got something to dream about. Not Earl. <laughs> we ain't arguing today. I don't want to hear nothing. No, I didn't cook because I was dreaming. I ain't got nothing to say. I was dreaming. Every, come on, Shaquita, we ain't arguing today. We got to go to bed. Earl, Earl and Shaquita sleeping at 7 p.m. because they think if they dream it, they'll it'll come into reality. <laughs> no, you don't need to be arguing because you need to be in the walking in the spirit, right? <laughs> so now you're neglecting your fatherly, your your husbandly, wifely duties because you think what this guy is saying is actually true when it's actually nonsense. My goodness. Earl and Shaquita, come on to all things theology. We'll teach you some sound doctrine and get you away from this foolishness. Because there is a dream that I have to have. It's a dream catcher. <laughs> what are you going to do? when your waking life looks like your sleeping life. See, the only difference is you got enough courage to dream it. You just don't have enough courage to believe it. No, 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 no. If you can believe it, you could achieve it type theology. What are we, what are, what, what are we doing, sir? What are we doing? Yes, Randy Watson. <laughs> that boy is good. I, I mean, I, I can't control my dreams. I don't know about y'all, man. I, I'll dream some crazy stuff and I'll realize in my dream I'm dreaming and I'll continue with the nonsense. <laughs> It don't take courage to dream stuff. All it takes is an imagination, I guess. I mean, my goodness. But it was just my imagination. Oh, my goodness. And let me tell you something. Every dream is a divine opportunity for your thoughts to live. God wouldn't have gave you the thought if he didn't think that you can handle it. If you can dream it, you can have it. If you can dream it, you can see it. If you can dream it, you can have it. If you dream it, you can see it. If you dream it, you can have it. If you dream it, you can see it. If you dream it, you can have it. If you dream it, you can see it. If you dream it, you can have it. If you dream it, you can see it. Tell three people I see something. I see this. Hey, that sounded like when the tape recorder stuck. <laughs> Just not again. Dreams are not real. You are, will be a fool to act like live reality based on your dreams. Something. I see something. I see something. I see something. Sir, 
You need to go to bed with this sermon. My goodness. Okay, this next one, y'all, y'all are going to cut up laughing. Get your laugh emojis ready, because this one even caught me off guard when I was listening to this one. All men under me. Watch this. If you'll let him ground you, he'll do the drawing. You're missing. You keep lifting yourself up. God says, I'm trying to ground you because those who make themselves great will be made humble, but those who make themselves humble will be made great. Humble yourself, I say, under the mighty hand of God. God is trying to humble you. Can you touch three people and say, get low, 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 get low from the window. You got to get low. Get low, get low. Come on, church. I know you holy, but you hear me. Get low. No, no. What in the little John is going on? What? What is this guy doing in the pulpit? What? Sir. I mean, he loved him some, you know, some ludicrous. Now he on some little John. I'm tired of church. Let me calm myself down, but let's go to the next clip. My goodness, when I first heard that, I was like, I cannot believe this guy. That brought me back to middle school. My goodness. Pray for your enemies. I'm about to tell you something. You ever heard a story about Haman and Mordecai? And when Haman tried to get Mordecai killed, the Bible says that the king took Haman's ring and put it on Mordecai. And at the end of the story, oh, I'm about to preach. The Bible says, and I'm just paraphrasing, uh, uh, Mordecai went house shopping. And he was looking for a house. And the king says, oh, oh, you ain't got to buy one. Because I'm about to give you Haman's house. What you don't know is that you got to leave your enemies alive long enough to build your house. Oh, my God. oh you got to. So I guess the point of this passage is we keep our enemies at long we keep our enemies live uh, long enough. <laughs> we keep them alive long enough as if we're taking them out. I mean, that don't make sense. Anyways, we keep them alive long enough. So they build a house for us. But I guess when we build a house for us, we can now take them out. Uh, how does this make any sense? <laughs> Is that the point of the passage? <laughs> Oh. Let them alone long enough because God is going to give it to them first and then make them watch them hand it over to you. But you got to be humble. Who am I helping in here today? <laughs> Tell three people say so you got to be humble. So, so let me get this straight. If I'm just humble, God will give me my neighbor, my enemy's house down the street or wherever. This is, it sounds like somebody's coveting the new house down the road. You know, that's what it sounds like to me. This is pure nonsense being uh, postulated as biblical. It is just pure nonsense. Don't worry. We got some more. Let's check this one out. Who is this word for? Online. Am I talking to y'all too? Write humility in the chat if I'm talking to you. Don't let somebody who is mean and messy make you miss your miracle. Why you gonna, why you gonna fight that hard to get something and then lose it because you let somebody make you act a fool? And I'm preaching to the choir because it ain't easy. Like, if they push the right button, any sanctified thugs in here, let me see your hand. I mean, you got a degree in thugism. Like, like, you perfected cussing after you worship. Look at me. I'm talking. Oh, she's like, Rev, how you know my business? Because I'm you. <laughs> boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. So, so you got the whole church cussing after worship. I mean, James talks a lot about the tongue, right? And uh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, Rev, how you know I'm cussing? Because I'm you. So he didn't, he didn't tell all on his business. We, yeah, we know you cussing. We know you cussing up a storm after worship. <laughs> My goodness, terrible. One more clip. One more clip. July 8th. We had our. Oh, yes, because hey, a lot of people have been talking about where, because it kind of just gone missing, right? I mean, he's kind of hadn't really talked about it a lot, but that uh, that money for the church. 
Remember the four million he claimed with, you know, going to have in 21 days. And then he said four months, which was around April. Uh, you know, so it should be happening around now, you know, uh, late May, the hurricane happened like in April. So he said it was going to four months. He, all, all that's going to happen. Well, it still ain't happened. And a lot of people have been, hey, what's what's up with that four? Go, matter of fact, go and put four in the chat, right? Because he's kind of just dropped that number from his language. <laughs> he's dropped all that. And he's, hey, we kind of forget about it. Let's Let's see what he has to say. First conversation with the insurance company this week. They didn't agree on what, what was supposed to happen. We, it was a wind event. They said no, a pipe burst. You know how insurance companies do. All of a sudden, somebody shows up to the church from the insurance company with a check. And it wasn't for the claim, but anybody knows what a good faith payment is? They brought us a check as a way of saying we've come to agreements that now you can file a claim. So I had to look this word up because I'm like, it doesn't actually sound like he actually got the money he was hoping for or expecting for. So a good faith payment is money that is deposited by a buyer to show their intention of completing a deal. Um, I guess it's mainly used for housing and things like that. I'm sure it could be used for insurance. But if I'm understanding what I'm reading correctly, a good faith payment is something usually that, you know, a, uh, a buyer does, you know, so he, it would be him making a payment. So maybe it's something they're saying, hey, look, we're going to give you this amount of money. OK, let me let me try to be fair to what he's trying to say. Maybe it's them saying, hey, we're going to give you this amount of money, which would it, it's just kind of weird because it, he's saying it's not the insurance claim that he's wanting, but it's a good faith payment. So I don't know if it's less, but they're giving him some kind of money. Right. Cool. Um, doesn't seem like it's still the, the amount that he's kind of hoping for. Hey, but they're just giving him a check. OK, that's cool. Well, glad you got your money. Hope you get your church fixed. But he also wants us to feel sorry for him, right? Though he has four campuses, right? Uh, maybe a better, hey, sell the rest of those campuses, have one church, I guess. Uh, you, you'll be preaching the same nonsense no matter what happens there, right? Uh, there's some more development I want to talk about uh, as as well with that. But Keon Henderson is the, is the king of just preaching sermons that absolutely make no sense. And it's why you should avoid him. To the next time, grace and peace. Oh, grace and peace. Thank you for watching another episode of All Things Theology. If you enjoyed what you heard today, go on and give me a like. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. I promise to give you weekly lives, videos, interactions, exposing false teachers, sharing with you, the viewer, my theological beliefs, things about the culture and the Bible. So if you're here for that, come on and join us. Also, if you would like to support this channel financially, you can do so by becoming a Patreon member or a YouTube member. Links are in the description below. You can see content before it drops. You can also have Q&A sessions with also other Patreon members, YouTube members as well. So if you would like that, hit the description link in below. Hey.